San Ambrosio, I may be mispronouncing that, and I apologize, is in honor of St. Ambrose, Milan's first bishop. He's from the Lombard region, so he's from northern Italy. And what we're seeing here, the thing to keep in mind in Milan is that Milan doesn't act Italian at the time. It is a major trading city in far northern Italy where materials would come over from, for example, France and what is today Germany or the Holy Roman Empire at the time, and they're entering into Italy. So it's going to be heavily influenced by northern ideas, but we do see some crossover. We do see some southern ideas from Italy moving north into Milan. So we get this very hybrid style, a mix of ideas. And this is one of the last churches where we see a Christian atrium. In other words, that big opening in front of the church there, that courtyard, that was so common in late antiquity, but has moved on and no longer exists today. This is the end of that period where you would see that kind of atrium. It also recalls Atonian architecture at the end of the medieval with that dome over the crossing, specifically an octagonal dome over the crossing, that very flat dome rather than a spire that we would tend to associate with, for example, the Romanesque. There is no clear story in this building. Uh, so if we look at it, it's quite low and squat. It's quite dark, actually. There is no transept. It is basilica form, which makes sense because basilica form comes from the Romans. We're in Milan. They're surrounded by Roman architecture. So they're going to adopt this much more readily than we see elsewhere. We also see the use of groin vaults once again, although you see those ribs coming in, those brick lines. This is starting to transition a little bit into what will become a rib vault later on. And the advantage of a rib vault is that all of the material of the groin vault becomes very lightweight because they don't need that material. The ribs are actually what's holding it up. Everything in between is simply filler. You can fill it with anything, plaster, brick, the hopes and dreams of art history majors everywhere. And if that part collapses, the fill collapses, it doesn't matter because the rib that's holding it up actually will do the support work for it. In fact, we'll see that after the fire at Notre Dame, for example, uh, just a few years ago. The advantage of a rib vault is it's much lighter because of that unnecessary fill material. I can use anything, like I said, plaster very commonly. Also, it opens up the space. If you look at the difference between a groin vault and where those intersect, those corners where it brings the weight down versus the rib vault, you'll notice that those corners are much smaller, which opens up the space more. Remember, a church, a religious site, is probably the place that everyone in town will get together in. It's a sort of place today where we would build a dome or something like that. And we've seen that in the past. And so they want to open the space as much as possible to get in as many people as possible. Also with a lightweight roof, such as a rib vault, it means that I can build something even taller. We are laying the groundwork for the Gothic. And so this becomes incredibly important as the first use of the rib vault in Romanesque architecture. 